Hello, my name is Jack Shaw and welcome to the marketing of Nestle. The founder of Nestle is Henry Nestle. He was born on the 10th of August 1814 in Frankfurt, Germany. In 1867, Henry Nestle developed a breakthrough in the food sector. He developed one of the first infant foods in reply to the high demand of healthier foods for infants. Some years later, in 1905, Henry Nestle merged his company with Anglo-Swiss to create what is now known as Nestle. Nestle is one of the biggest companies in the world, supplying food all over the world. Nestle sells a huge range of products all over the world, and Nestle is now known as one of the biggest food companies. The products that Nestle sell are all in the food and drink market. However, not all of the products are edible for humans, as cat and dog food is now being produced by Nestle, maybe to open them up to a new market. Here are some of the products that Nestle have on offer. For chocolate, there are Kit Kats, Rolos, Munches, and for cereal, there are Cheerios, Curiously Cinnamon, Golden Nuggets, and some other popular products are Nestle Pure Life, Nescafe and Nesquik. Some of the most popular products produced by Nestle are Nescafe, Nespresso and Kit Kats. Sales of the Kit Kat in the UK in 2014 were some of the strongest in the world, with sales growing by 5%. With some of Nestle's older and more favoured products such as the Yorkie Bar becoming less popular, new product development will have to take place. Companies are always trying to create new products so they can have the upper hand against competitors. The fact that Nestle are creating pet food shows that they are doing this, as Cadbury's and other competitors are not doing that. They also may be doing this to get into different markets to satisfy new customers and to stay competitive. Marketing is a massive role in every business as if it is done wrong, ultimately the company could fail and not be competitive in that market. There are different orientations which companies use, such as production, product, sales and marketing orientations. Nestle uses different parts of them. Nestle is mostly a marketing orientated company. Marketing orientation is where the company puts the customers at the heart of every business decision. This should mean that more products are bought by the customers, as their ideas will be moulded into this product, hopefully leading to more sales. There are many different benefits of marketing orientation, such as the increase of sales, increase in profitability, increase of loyal customers, increase in their market share, and increase in satisfied customers. Production orientation is where there is a high volume of product sold at cheap prices. Nestle doesn't really incorporate this into their products. However, competitors such as supermarkets own branded products could be seen using this orientation. The next orientation is product orientation. This is where the company adds to existing products or ideas. Nestle can be seen doing this with the expansion of the new flavours for Kit Kats. Kit Kat was a good product to expand as it was one of the best sellers for Nestle. Cadbury's, which is Nestle's biggest competitor, can also be seen using this orientation, with the dairy milk bar having new flavours and ingredients added to it, such as nuts and caramel. The final orientation is sales orientation. This is where the company sells what they produce. Sales orientation isn't a big factor in the marketing of Nestle. However, one aspect of it can be used. This is to increase the customers from the previous year. This is the only factor of sales orientation seen to be used at Nestle. Nestle is in the food and drink market. The market is a very competitive and tough market to become a market leader in. This is because other companies are always creating new products to better competition. And if the customers like it, products can easily become unfavourable. Nestle have many different competitors in the food and drink sector. 
Some of them competitors are Hersha, Cabra and Galaxy. However, these competitors are only in the food and drink market and only sell chocolate, sweets and milkshake, unlike Nestle. One of Nestle's biggest competitors is Unilever. Unilever was founded in 1929 by Antonius Johann Jöns, Samuel van den Berg and James Darcy Lever. Unilever is a multinational consumer goods company with headquarters in Rotterdam and London. Unilever is in the same market as Nestle. And just like Nestle, Unilever doesn't just sell food and drinks. Unilever owns around 400 different products ranging from Dove soap to washing up liquid. Unilever are a direct competitor to Nestle. But Nestle are still the market leader as they posted a revenue of 98 billion in 2014 and Unilever only had a 68.5 billion pound revenue. Brexit is still yet to have an impact on Nestle. Paul Bulk, who is the chief executive, said that Nestle are considering all options, including price raises, as it comes under pressure from the pound falling. This would mean the price of Nestle's products would have to be altered in response to the pound falling. Obesity is a huge problem in the UK, costing the NHS £8 billion per year. Nestle have made it part of their policy to work closely with national and international public health bodies around the world to help reduce obesity. The Yorkie bar has shrunk 10 grams from 65 grams to 55 grams. Nestle is the first company to develop policies to reduce fat, sugar and salt in production. This is opening themselves up to new markets. The government have recently released that there will be a sugar tax on soft drinks in the UK. This will not affect Nestle but it could do in the future as a tax could be used on chocolate and sweets. This would mean that Nestle would have to increase the price of their products. Nestle have around 340,000 employees around the world with 8,000 in the UK. Nestle have a plan called the Nestle Cocoa Plan. This is where they train farmers to be more sustainable, build schools and provide the farmers with 12 million higher yielding cocoa plants by 2020. This is done in the Ivory Coast, Ecuador and Ghana. This proves that they are looking after their employees and are wanting to better their lives. And this is the end of the marketing of Nestle. Thank you for listening and here are some of the sources which I have used throughout this presentation.